in this special episode of Art Loft. It's Sunfest 2017, featuring Rocket to Anywhere. We want people to take away from our music kind of this positive, uh, kind of hopeful outlook. We, we, you know, we see a lot of negativity, and we just want to give people this positive experience. Sun Ghosts. If you're doing anything that you love, there's always going to be challenges, and it's just about sticking to it and finding ways to overcome those and how you overcome them. The, the Sunfest Arts District. And Magic City Hippies. And we became this kind of inseparable triangle of uh, indie funk mastery. It's all ahead in this episode of Art Loft. Funding for Art Loft was made possible by Friends of Art and Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. Hi, I'm Lolo Reskin, and from Sunfest in West Palm Beach, this is Art Loft. Welcome back. I'm Lolo Reskin, and today we are coming to you from Sunfest in downtown West Palm Beach. In this special episode, we've got profiles of some of the bands that are playing today, and we're going to catch up with them right here at the festival. We're also going to check out some of the visual artists and painting and other things going on here today. First, let's take a look around to get a feel for this festival. In our first profile, we're heading into the stratosphere with Rocket to Anywhere. This quintet delivers indie pop music that makes you feel right at home in the West Palm Beach sun and surf. Tag along as we hear more from this up and coming band. I, when, I, when I think of the band, I think of Ben's face in his red hair. Joel is the hot electric guitarist. He's hot and he plays guitar. Andrew's our, our goofy DJ. He comes from a DJ background. Just sort of brings that electronic vibe to us. Keeps us from being just a stereotypical rock band. It gives us some dance aspect. Luke is our drummer and Luke is just a really funny guy. He's like super natural, just always down to have a good time and laugh and just do something ridiculous. And that's fun. I'm always down to do something dumb. We got started in December 2014. It was a solo project. I started getting calls about having a full band. So I recruited uh, these guys, guys that I've played with before. And uh, we did Balcony TV ever since then. It's just kind of been one thing after another. I like to say that I stumbled into the band because I kind of did. Me and Ben used to play together in an old band. And he got a band together and I was like, oh, let me go check it out, see what they sound like. So I walk over, I'm in like my pajamas. Their bassist never showed up, so I was like, I play bass, I'll fill in. I just kind of kept filling in on bass, and it's a year later and I'm still here, so. Ben, he had all the other members of the band, and I was the, the last addition. I came to the first practice, and we ran through five or six songs just right off the bat. Uh, we just really meshed from the beginning. And we started playing shows, working on music, and the next thing you know, we were Rockets Anywhere. A lot of people describe Rocket as being like coast rock, like coast pop, kind of indie. We don't really like have a genre per se. Very guitar centric. And we tell people we kind of sound like where we live. We, we sound like the beach. Driving down in the ocean in a convertible, we'd hope to be like your music of choice. West Palm, like they have bars and different places for us to play all the time. And there's always something going on and I think that aids us. That whole energy when we're playing together and when I'm seeing the crowd like get into our music, to see that is just an amazing feeling. And when I'm playing with these guys, it is 10 times better. I turn around and I look at Luke and I can't help but smile whenever Luke's on the drum set. Like I just look at him and I'm just having a good time. Being the front man of a band, it's up to you to deliver the energy to the crowd and to respond to the energy that's coming from the crowd. Every time people show up for our shows, we're like, wow, I can't believe you're here. <laughs> But it's just crazy to me that people are listening to songs that, you know, I just, I just wrote and, and they're, you know, things that I've expressed and these people are kind of sharing in that. We want people to take away from our music kind of this positive, uh, kind of hopeful 
outlook. We, we, you know, we see a lot of negativity and we just want to give people this positive experience. I play all the lead guitar lines. We have the creative freedom to write our own parts, kind of format them how we'd like to play them. Just getting to do something this cool for a little Georgia boy is, is kind of fun. I was wrong. The lemonade was for sale, but it didn't take long. So you seen alone on street and crying in the car. Summer rain mixed in with tears as you roll down your window. And I said, Do you mind if I join you? It's a Some songs I'll have like a really distinctive lick that sort of makes or breaks the song. And then other songs I'm more of a background instrument. I'm just there to fill out that low end and just sort of bridge the gap between the drums and whatever the lead guitar is doing. I play keys and backup vocals. A lot of just hearing what Ben has in mind and then going through and playing different sounds and experimenting with different things until like for our last song we were sitting in his living room just going through songs, going through songs and then we heard it and we were like, dang. That's the one right there. We went and tracked it. We want to do like happy music and music that people can connect with and have a moment with. I think Golden, personally, that's like one of my favorites we play. It has a lot of different aspects to it. For me, that, that song really captures who we are as a band. We're not only creating music for ourselves, but also for other people to enjoy because we want other people to have good experiences with music. Just growing up and looking at people on a stage and being like, wow, I want to do that. And then finally getting to be on the stage and looking at people in the crowd and just think that I've like switched positions. I can tell you to look out for us because we're on the come up. The sky's the limit for, for where we can go, but where it will go is, is really yet to be seen. Welcome back. We're here at Sunfest today. I'm Lola Reskin and I'm standing here with indie pop quintet, Rocket to Anywhere. Hey guys! Hey. hey! So you guys are from West Palm Beach. What does it mean for you to be playing Sunfest? Well, it's it's just incredible to be. We've been at this festival like for the last many years in a row. I've been coming here since I was two. Um, so it's just really cool to actually be here and be on the other side uh, of the, I guess, the exchange here. We're the band now, and we get to kind of be what all these bands were to me when I was two. We can be that for a whole new generation of people. So that's yeah. awesome. Uh, how long have you guys been together? About a, year, about a year and a half. Yeah. A year and a half. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And what else are you guys looking forward today in your sun festing? Uh, I'm really excited to see Tori Kelly. I'm excited to see Rebel in a Basket Case. Yeah. Uh, marshmallow for me. Yeah. We've been here all. I mean, we've been here all week. We've yep. seen some really cool acts. So this is really, really great to be part of this. Well, it's a beautiful day. Great yeah. festival. Tons of people out. Thanks so much. We're gonna see more about Rocket to Anywhere right after this. behind me, Rocket to Anywhere are setting up for their set on this huge stage here at Sunfest. We're going to get out in the crowd and get a good viewpoint for their show. So today we're here at Sunfest, and I'm standing right here with three of the Magic City Hippies. Hey guys. How's it going? Good. So you guys 
opened up the stage on this beautiful Saturday. Uh, was this your first Sunfest? Yeah, yeah. First, yeah. Sun first yeah. Sunfest. First time here, first time playing, but it's awesome. Yeah. Cool, cool. And uh, tell us about some of the other, you guys just got back from tour. Tell us some other interesting places you played or some stories. Man, where haven't we played? Yeah. We played the whole country. We did like a nice uh, figure eight and then did it again. 15,000 miles, I think 45 shows, yeah. 67 days straight. We're some Miami band in our first winter tour. We're playing in Minnesota, Fargo, yeah, wow. Montana. Our first show is in Fargo, cool. North Dakota. I went skiing wow. for the first time. That's nice. I, I also recently <laughs> skied for the first time as a, as a South Floridian. So I heard you guys are going to Bonnaroo this year. It's amazing. Uh, what, are you guys excited? Do you have yes. any special plans? Uh, just to be so excited and go. This is a dream of ours. To play at Bonnaroo is crazy. And that was, so you know, excited. the tour went really well, and the outcome of that was the offer to play Bonnaroo, and that couldn't have gone more perfectly. You know, that's exactly what we were hoping for. Awesome. Well, congratulations Thank on that. You. It was a great set today. Thanks, and you guys are going to see more up ahead on Art Loft. Woo! Sun Ghosts are one of the bands that kicked off Sunfest on Wednesday. Here are some highlights from their performance. Oh, that's a feeling all right. My crime was distraction, it blinded my path by drowning my purpose from view. Miami's own sun ghosts are what happens when indie garage rock goes to the beach. In this feature, we catch up with the band to learn about their origins and what defines their sound. Arminio Crocodile Deathspin Rivero. He, uh, he was in my Music Business 2 class, and we always talked about starting a, a side project band together because we were both in our own bands at the time. So I called up Arminio, and he was actually our first drummer. But he was always talking about his best friend, Louis, and saying how incredible of a drummer he was. They've been playing in bands together since they were in like third grade. That little six month like period of us figuring everything out was cool because it was like not too many cooks in the kitchen. We could just kind of figure out what sound we want to have a general idea. Then when we got with Louie, it was like, okay, like boom, like this guy's rhythms, like everything that he's applying to it, like now we got a sound, we can roll with it. Genre usually, you know, my, my quick answer when I tell somebody, like, oh man, what does it sound like? Oh yeah, you know, the Ramones went to the beach more. And it's like that, you know? The finest surf rock, sock hop, punk rock your ears can taste. Like we have a song that's just like a poppy, surfy, you know, fun song. Then we have Vibkin Villains that's like a dark, like harmonic minor song. We have Dose that's a straight up like punk song. We got Meet Me at the Rainbow Bridge. It's just like a ballad, like a psychedelic, like it just takes you on a trip. So it's hard to pinpoint it, but I feel like we have our own sound. Like if you hear one of our songs, you'll know it's us. For the sake of just, you know, giving it some sort of a label, um, it's, you know, rock and roll with guys that grew up in a place that is not meant for rock and roll. Now we're
I feel like it's definitely like a huge, a huge part of my life. It's just become like this comfortable, energetic, like adrenaline roller coaster that I love riding every time I get the chance to. In the end, I just, I plan on taking sun ghosts all around the world and spreading as much positivity and hope. I think everybody needs to, to feel that and see that and just make the world a better place than, than when I got here. There's a ton of musical acts here at Sunfest, but there's also an extraordinary amount of visual arts at this annual festival. We're here in the Art Village, and we're gonna go take a tour. Come with us. We're here at the Mobile Murals tent with Lewis, and it'd be awesome if you could tell us a little bit about what you've got going on here today. Well, uh, we're kind of doing like a group project thing going on, and uh, we're inviting people to come in and paint, um, to kind of keep it interactive, keep them engaged. It's fun, you know? listening to music, coming out here, interacting with people. I'm standing here with Beiju, the artist who is responsible for this gorgeous piece behind us and a few other here at the festival today. How's it going? Very well. I'm very pleased to be here. Great. Well, this is a wonderful piece. Can you tell us a little bit about how you made it? So this is my character, Dudali. And Dudali is a stick figure, human stick figure. And I'm able to configure it any way the human body can be, you know, any position. So uh, basically, my theme is about body language. I speak to you through body language. Excellent. So Dudali has been all over the world, not quite all over, but in a few, few countries. I recently came back from Finland, where I, where I was near the Arctic Circle and made one out of ice, wow. a challenge. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about why public art is important to you. OK, public art, because obviously, as an artist, you need to expose yourself. So. Uh, or your work. So public is the best way. I mean, it's everybody sees it. And my, my sculptures are always playful and bright and colorful. So they speak to everybody. And it's always in a fun way. So it's not, it, it's, it's always joyful. That's my thing, really. That's great. Well, cool. Tell us about this uh, contraption here. So uh, I combine my doodally into a bicycle because, and I, I hate symmetry. Okay. So I really, really got away from symmetry completely. How many bikes do you know that are asymmetrical? Probably just one. Yeah, just this one. <laughs> so this is, yeah, this is Dudali Cyclet. Ah, I love it. Well, sh sh show us how it goes. And I just So many booths out, and we're here at Hot Damn Arts, and we've got the artist here, Dave Burns. How's it going, Dave? Hey, I'm doing terrific. Cool. Uh, yeah, he's got some great posters Lolo, out today. Hello, I did this poster yesterday for Tom Petty when he played at uh, the, uh, the fairgrounds last night. Awesome. It's pretty killer. Like, it's one of the most iconic things I've ever drawn, and it's one of those things where people are contacting me, like, how can I buy it? How can I buy it? Like, how many different ways can I buy it? And where can people so, find out about your stuff? Hotdamarts.com, man. Perfect. It's like my Thanks store, so yeah. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, totally. Cool. I'm here with artist Phil Fung. Hey, Phil, how's it going? I'm doing very well. Nice to see you here. Always uh, a pleasure. Thank you. Is this your first Sunfest? No, this is actually my eighth or ninth Sunfest. I've done this show since 2009, I think. Wow, awesome. Uh, uh, what do you love about being here? Uh, I just love the energy. I, I, up here in West Palm Beach, I do really good business. And um, this is such a fun event since there's so much music, so many people going on. 
and it's actually one of my favorite shows to do in Florida. That's awesome, and so you've got paintings here, and you've got some interactive stuff over there, live painting. Yeah, I'm here showing my work, selling my work, and then what we're doing this year is we're collecting people's favorite memories of Florida, their favorite beach memory, and we're just going to incorporate it into art, and hopefully by the end of Sunday we'll have it all done. Awesome, thanks so much for talking with no us today, Cheers, Bill. Nice to see you. Always a pleasure. Take care. Ready for some funk? Our next band has plenty. The trio behind Magic City Hippies is committed to a unique sound that will definitely get you dancing. In this profile, we explore how the group came together and what defines them as a band. Enjoy. I was playing on the street corner in the Grove, like a one-man band. The cops came eventually after a year of playing and told me to leave or they were going to arrest me. Fast forward to playing at the Barracuda Bar every Friday night, meeting Pat, the drummer. He would like subbed in last minute. Now there's a bromance there. Then that brought on John Coughlin. And it was the summer and we were in college. We didn't, I didn't have anything to do. They had like a Tuesday night gig. And I was like, Pat, you know, I would love to just play with you guys. I met Robbie like once before. So we kind of played it. Right off the bat, music was what our acquaintance at that time and that friendship was built off of. And we became this kind of inseparable triangle of uh, indie funk mastery. come usually to the table with some type of very raw, unpolished idea. Very like cheesy John Mayer, Jack Johnson acoustic thing, you know? And then Pat will like literally like disassemble it. John will add some type of guitar line here or they'll be like, oh no, there has to be this bridge and then John will write it. Everything's kind of built on a groove. It's danceable, old music, new. You're gonna hear some weird stuff, some experimental stuff, some outros, some stuff that doesn't completely subscribe to like the pop commercial format and funk is just kind of, it's gonna be funky. It'll make you want to make like a weird face or like move a little bit. A little bit of hip hop, there's a little bit of uh, funk, there's a little bit of rock, you know? All based in kind of like a pop mentality and tainted with a little bit of, you know, Latin flair. Sometimes I feel like someone who is left brain person, like, you know, a numbers person. So I kind of almost apply a lot of that in the studio, be like, Pat, no, try, this is, would be this chord normally. And then Pat's got all this like crazy stuff that he hears and so he messes with a couple things I throw out and then he creates this beautiful line. The way he plays music is crazy. It's in a lot of ways it's kind of opposite what I do like he just like uses his ear and just like hears things that I can't hear. I'm like always I'm just like if you hear like a, a slide guitar solo that's my thing. I've been playing drums since I was like six years old. It's comfortable and satisfying. I need to do it. It kind of lights me up a little bit. I like it. It's uh, a Jones for it. John has like an uninhibited like musical mind. He, he can pretty much pick up any stringed instrument. He's also a guitar player and he's also like an encyclopedia of Beatles songs. Knowing the Beatles catalog, discography that well, John has confidence in the right moves just based off of the patterns of like, you know, stuff that really changed pop music back in the 60s. And When I'm on stage, I am like not even there. You, I have no idea where I am. I'm just singing these lyrics. I have my eyes closed a lot of the time. There's nothing like that to write lyrics and have people sing along with you, you know? It's kind of just... It's just mind-blowing. just gives me hope for the future of the band. I think we're doing something right. Robbie is easygoing. He raps on a lot of the songs and it's beachy. He's got the Miami lifestyle kind of ingrained in his brain, you know? So the, the lyrics come out and like that's just what his soul says. All of our band locks in and we have a groove that we're... Everybody's just kind of like, you know, we got a huge smile on your face. It's kind of like fight or flight, but not... <laughs> not in like a dangerous situation, you know what I mean? Where it's just like... Oh man, like I gotta bring it right now because I'm in front of like a thousand people. You have to pass two of the toughest critics. Anything you think of, you've got like your two toughest critics being like, nah. So the stuff that when they're like, yeah, you know, and they get really excited about it, 
it is like the honestly best thing we think we could have done. So I want you to move your head like this when you listen to it. It's kind of, kind of goal. Magic City hippies, it's come a long way. Long way from the Barracuda bar. We're not gonna stop. We're in love with doing this, so. We have had an awesome day here at Sunfest. I'm Lola Ruskin for Art Loft. Connect with us on social media at Artloft SFL and watch anytime on the PBS app by selecting WPBT2 as your local station. Thanks again and we'll see you next time. Funding for Artloft was made possible by Friends of Art and Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West.